Hi, this is John with the Everyday Bible Study. We're looking at the Word of God, and we're doing a topical study looking at what uh, the Bible has to say about the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Heaven. And uh, those words are, uh, terms are just somewhat interchangeable. And uh, we're looking at the various passages. We looked in the past uh, Bible study at the book of Luke. And we're going to look, um, excuse me, at the book of Matthew. But now we're going to look in the book of Luke. And the first passage that we're going to look at here is Jesus preaching in the synagogues. And this is from Luke 4, 42 through 44. If you notice, Jesus, uh, back then they didn't have any churches. Of course, the church had not been established. That would not be established uh, up until after Jesus' ministry. And established, uh, you can read about it, in the book of Acts in the second chapter. And uh, Jesus had to fulfill his ministry before the, whole, the church was established. But uh, Jesus was active in establishing the church. And he established it within the hearts and the lives of the people. And uh, it was through his uh, instruction, but also uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, which would come later, <clears throat> that would establish the church. And the church is a portion of the kingdom of God, uh, the portion that is here on earth. And uh, it will last up until, um, up until the end of time and uh, the last days, as we see in the book of Revelation. Uh, but now Jesus is preaching in the synagogue, and he would preach out in the open. He'd preach in people's homes. Uh, he'd preach in the marketplace. Uh, he would preach uh, at just to people that he would meet. But oftentimes he would preach in the synagogue. And if you don't know what a synagogue is, it is the Jewish place of worship. Uh, it's where the Jews would worship God uh, when they were in their local community. And there were synagogues in uh, most of the local communities uh, all over the area, uh, basically all over the world, and um, or a great deal of the world uh, that had Jews in it. And uh, Jesus uh, would oftentimes go to these synagogues and uh, preach uh, uh, the good news of God, the new revealed word of God, because he was the living word. And it's starting here with uh, chapter 4, verse 42. And it said, When it was day, he departed and went to a desolate place. And the people sought him and came to him. And he would have kept uh, him from leaving. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God uh, to the other towns as well. For I was sent for this purpose. And said he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. And uh, so uh, that this doesn't go into a great deal of detail uh, in this passage, uh, uh, this small passage. I'm sure if you go farther into the text, it tells about what God, Jesus was teaching in the synagogues. But uh, he is telling us that he's preaching the good news. And, of course, the good definition of the good news is, is he was going to be living that out. And that would be the de his death and burial and bringing the kingdom of God into the world. And uh, he was telling them. So he was teaching to them out in the open, but he was also teaching to them in the synagogues uh, there in Judea. The next passage we're going to look at is from Luke uh, 19 through 21. And this is from the, uh, well, we should, you could call it the Sermon on the Plain. Uh, you, you may say, well, it sounds like the Sermon on the Mount. And there's a great deal of uh, similarity to it. Uh, he wasn't actually on a mountain when he was teaching this, but uh, that sermon was kind of Jesus' stem sermon. And he basically says most of the same things that he said on the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is in the book of Matthew. But here he is in the book of Luke, and he says pretty much the same things, but uh, the order gets changed around because he was speaking to a different group of people. And, uh, but uh, here he's t teaching about the kingdom of God. And it said here, And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him, and he healed them. And he, I guess he had a great healing service before he gave this sermon. And he's starting off this sermon uh, that uh, we know as the Sermon on the Mount, or the Sermon uh, in the Plain, um, and he was probably in a flat area. And it said, He lifted up his eyes on the, his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that are hungry, for you shall be satisfied. And blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. And he keeps on going. Um, if you look there in this uh, sixth chapter 
of Luke, you can look at the Beatitudes or uh, uh, the blessings that he gave to the people. And this first one there is uh, pretty unique. It says, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. And here we're looking, he was preaching to people that were very poor. Uh, some that would come and uh, hear him uh, would go days without food. And because they were so poor, uh, they didn't have McDonald's or anything like that. And they often didn't have a whole lot of food that they could carry with them uh, to hear Jesus. But he'd draw huge crowds. Uh, we know of one case where he drew a crowd of 5,000 men plus women and children. Another case where he drew 4,000. And who knows how many were here. It could probably have been a very similar crowd. But he said that the poor people uh, will be inheriting the kingdom of God. Now, you don't inherit it by being poor, but uh, you inherit it by believing on Jesus Christ for your salvation. And that's how you gain salvation and gain the kingdom of God. And uh, But the poor people were more apt to believe because just uh, uh, we saw in the previous lesson uh, the story of the rich young ruler. And the rich young ruler had many possessions and Jesus told him in order to keep the commandments you need to sell your possessions and give them to the poor and then come and follow me. And um, because, you know, the poor people were so poor that some of them could have been starving and uh, their children could be going without food, being, could have been malnourished. And he wanted these people to be provided for. But the rich young ruler, ruler was not able to do that. Excuse me. He was not willing to do that. Uh, he had the ability to, but uh, he, his money and possessions meant more to him than Jesus Christ did and more to him than these poor people that needed uh, to have their bellies filled and the, their, you know, taken care of, their needs met. Uh, so Jesus has said to these oppressed people who were poor, who were having a difficult time in life, uh, they were believing on him, and they listened to every word that he said. And uh, they uh, not only listened, but they did what he said. And uh, in this, uh, you know, their faith in Jesus Christ led to their salvation. And whenever they got saved then they entered into the church. They entered into the God's kingdom here on earth, and then that would set them up for eternal life in Jesus Christ. And uh, that uh, we're promised that uh, if we believe on him, and we're born again and transformed uh, by his power, then we will be entered into this kingdom of God. And this kingdom of God is eternal. It's going to last forever so that uh, we will never die uh, we'll, we'll die a physical death, but our souls will never die. And we will be given a new body, and we'll be entering into this eternal life with Jesus Christ and with God. And uh, so uh, God has wonderful things planned for his children, and he wants to give you this eternal life. And here he's telling these poor people that this is yours because you have faith in me, uh, me being the God that has come to earth, the Messiah. Uh, that uh, has come to provide you salvation. Now we're going to look at uh, the uh, um, a story about John the Baptist. And here we are in Luke uh, chapter 7, and we're going to start with the 18th verse. And uh, some messengers had come from John the Baptist. John the Baptist uh, had been put into jail. Uh, his preaching was going to lead to his execution. And at this time, he was still alive, but he was um, having some doubts in jail, and I'm sure some spiritual warfare. The devil was just trying to trick him and put all kinds of evil thoughts in his head, and uh, he picks on us like that. Uh, but it said here, the disciples, these were the people that followed and, and helped uh, John the Baptist out, it said the disciples of John reported all these things to him. And uh, John, calling two of his disciples uh, to him, said, uh, sent them to the Lord, saying, um, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? So the devil was trying to put some doubt in John the Baptist's heart while he was sitting in prison. And uh, that sort of things can happen. And uh, when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And in that hour, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind, he bestowed sight. And, of course, these were things that these disciples of John the Baptist were observing. 
And he answered them, Go tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. So that's a very good news to tell uh, John. And that's true of us too. Uh, we're blessed if we're not offended by Jesus. And you know, many people in the world are offended by Jesus. Uh, they want to get him out of our schools. They want to get him out of our government. They want to do everything to get him out of the public arena. And uh, they don't want people to hear about the salvation because much of the world is controlled by the devil. But um, uh, here Jesus is telling us that if we're not offended by Jesus, but we lift him up, we hold him up, uh, then uh, uh, you know he is God that uh, walked the earth. And uh, that's one way we can get a blessing is not being offended by Jesus Christ. Now, let's get to the point here. It says here, when John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. It said, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? Uh, what then uh, did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. Uh, and of course, John the Baptist was not a luxurious man. He was this wild man preaching in the desert, wearing uh, clothes made out of camel's hair. And if you can imagine just having a wool sweater, that can be itchy enough. But you can imagine how rough it would be to have camel's hair. And uh, I've had paintbrushes made out of camel's hair. And uh, they're just as stiff and as hard and uh, as brittle as you can imagine. It would just be terrible trying to wear clothing made of camel's hair. And he ate uh, locusts and wild honey. And he had no, nothing special about his accommodations. He was living out in the middle of the desert. And said here, uh, what did you see? A prophet. Yes, and I tell you, more than a prophet. Uh, whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger before your face, uh, who will prepare your way before you. And I tell you, of those born among women, none is greater than John. And uh, John was actually the greatest of the prophets, although there were many wonderful great prophets before him, uh, Isaiah and Ezekiel and uh, various others. But it um, said, when the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, uh, they declared God just, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected him, uh, excuse me, rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. And uh, then uh, Jesus went, goes on to say, To what shall I compare uh, the people of this generation, and what are they like? They're like children sitting in the marketplace calling to one another. Uh, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge for you, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist came eating uh, no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. And the Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of the tax collector. Um, and tax collectors and sinners yet wisdom is justified by all her children uh, but uh, notice here it said here in 28 I tell you among those born of women none is greater than John yet though it says here yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he uh, when the people all heard this uh, 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 and the tax collectors too that declare God just having been baptized by the baptism of John uh, so we see here that it's telling us that we ourselves are more blessed than John uh, because uh, because uh, those that are saved those uh, who have uh, faith in Jesus Christ and gain salvation uh, they are seen as high regard as John the Baptist the top of the prophets and that's how valuable our salvation is. And uh, John was having doubts about Jesus, but many were having faith in Jesus, and uh, that was leading to their salvation and uh, them being a part of the kingdom of God. And of course, John the Baptist will be uh, part of the kingdom of God too. He was having a little bit of doubt here, but uh, uh, his testimony that his disciples would bring back to him, uh, I'm certain would make his faith secure. And, uh, but... Uh, uh, so the, the one that's least in the kingdom is greater than he. And see, he was of the, um, of the uh, age of prior to the church. 
but uh, those that would be there would uh, later on be a part of the church or part of God's kingdom. And uh, so, uh, um, you know, being an Old Testament prophet, and he was in the Old Testament era because the church had not been established yet in the book of Acts. Uh, here, uh, Jesus is saying they, they're going to be greater. The least in the kingdom are going to be greater than he. And he too would enter the kingdom. But uh, there would be a period of time where some would believe uh, and uh, be part of the kingdom of God probably already uh, prior, to, prior to John the Baptist. And uh, uh, this is something that's a little hard to wrap our heads around. But uh, he was a very great man, no doubt about it. But uh, we can have greater blessings uh, than uh, John the Baptist even uh, was receiving. And of course he didn't receive a lot of earthly blessings. But uh, I'm sure we're going to see John the Baptist in heaven. He's going to be part of the kingdom of God too. And, uh, but uh, this is the, uh, the uh, immensity of the uh, grace that is bestowed to God's children because of this kingdom of heaven that is being declared. Okay, we're now looking in Luke at the 8th chapter and uh, talking about the women that were accompanying Jesus. And, uh, but um, uh, basically talking about uh, what Jesus was doing. And uh, I'll just read for you the first uh, um, couple of verses here. And it said, Soon afterwards, uh, this is starting with verse 1 of chapter 8, Soon afterward he went through the cities and villages proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God and said the twelve were with him and there were also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities and it talks about some of the various women that that actually traveled with Jesus and supported his ministry here it's talking though that uh, Jesus it basically is just giving a quick summary of what Jesus was doing as he was going to the various cities and villages and they would walk by foot uh, and the population was fairly dense in those days and you could go from village to village and uh, you could go to probably in some cases maybe go to uh, a number of towns in even a day's time of course you'd spend more time in the larger towns and small cities but the disciples and the people who were going with Jesus uh, were going uh, uh, through the cities and villages proclaiming the good news of uh, the kingdom of God and uh, basically Jesus was telling he, he was as he was sharing the gospel sharing the good news of God this was establishing the kingdom of God in the hearts and the minds of the individuals there and of course he was telling the good news that he was their savior he was the one that was going to die for their sins and that they needed to have faith in him so that they could gain salvation and uh, he was uh, bringing them a, a, a season of, of uh, enlightenment a season of plenty uh, because uh, you know he was being bestowed to the earth and uh, was providing God's uh, good news uh, to the common people and of course um, he was doing a great deal of miracles as well uh, we look at some of these ladies who were uh, had infirmities and evil spirits they had sicknesses and uh, had demonic angels that were possessing or oppressing them and uh, but God was using these women as well uh, to carry out his purpose and some of these were uh, um, financing the ministry of Jesus including uh, said the wife of Chusa Herod's household manager and somebody named Susanna and that was providing for them out of their own means uh, providing their own money to contribute to this ministry that Jesus was doing so that they could go from town to town and were traveling with them and uh, they got the uh, witness the opportunity of Jesus proclaiming the word of God and uh, the good news of, uh, to the kingdom uh, of the kingdom that was being established uh, right in their midst and that's a beautiful thing well let's pray dear Heavenly Father thank you that this kingdom has been established uh, we have the church uh, in this day and this is uh, part of the kingdom of God that Jesus Christ established and it's all about him and uh, that's because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that we need salvation. Uh, our sins will lead to our uh, death, and uh, we need to believe on Jesus Christ to overcome our sins. And we need to repent of our sins, turn away from our sin, and turn toward uh, you, and turn toward uh, holy living, and uh, turn toward Jesus to save us from our sins 
so that we can gain salvation and be part of this kingdom of God that you have established. Help everyone that's watching this video to believe that Jesus Christ is their Savior and that he has the power over sin and death, that he resurrected from the dead and uh, that uh, he can bring us into your kingdom and bring us into eternal life. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I hope you're enjoying these everyday Bible studies. Uh, I'm going to ask you a favor. Uh, if you have the ability to share on social media, uh, something like Facebook or Twitter or uh, Instagram or wh whatever social media that you're involved in, Google+, uh, I'm going to ask that you share this video with somebody else so that they can find out the truth about Jesus Christ and they can find out about the kingdom of God for themselves directly from the Bible. And we wouldn't want to give it to you any other way because any other way would be guesses or conjecture. But uh, we learn the truth by going to the source of truth. And that is Jesus Christ. And uh, he won't lead us astray. He'll lead us into truth and righteousness. And that's what we want. To, uh, so that's why we ask you to share it. So other people will hear about Jesus and believe on Jesus. And they will be saved, believing in him for their salvation. So until next time, this is John uh, with the Everyday Bible Study, praying that you have a great day.